What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com. All right, so in today's video, we're gonna talk about some of the developments inside the Blender add-on world, as well as some other interesting things I found from Blender throughout the week. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first off, because it's cool, um, Jan from Blender Secrets has rolled out a really cool quick tutorial showing you how to make a boat floating on waves in the ocean. So if you don't follow Jan, he has amazing daily tips on how to use Blender. I definitely recommend both following him on Twitter. And if you want to, he also has his uh, Blender Secrets tips guide available as well. But even if you don't want that, I definitely recommend you follow him because he's got a lot of amazing stuff. This is actually something that I kind of wondered how to do. So make sure you check this out if you want to create any kind of a boat or floating effect inside of Blender. You might remember some of the cool stuff that Ben has done, um, BBBN19 on Twitter. So we've talked about some of his stuff before, like the curves to roads geometry node setup, for example. So he's rolled out a couple different things. So first off, he's rolled out the newest version of curves to roads. There's not a lot of new features in it, but what it does is it separates everything um, so that in the future, it kind of opens the door for more modular um, geometry node setups, that kind of thing with your roads. So if you haven't checked that out already, you can check that out on his site. I think it's like $4 or something like that. He's also rolled out a free wormhole um, effect right here. This is basically just an effect that's made using Blender shader nodes. So um, it's kind of interesting. I don't know exactly what you would use it for, but it is kind of fun. So basically what it does if you switch out of Eevee is it's basically just warping the HDRI, but then it's using some different refraction effects in order to create this wormhole effect. Um, it's actually kind of fun to play around with the roughness as well as the colors on this in order to see what this will do. So if I jump in here and adjust some of the colors, that kind of thing, it does some interesting stuff. So is it practical? Or are you going to use it every Every day. No. Is it a cool thing in Blender? Absolutely. So I wanted to make sure to highlight it also because Ben just seems like he's making some really cool stuff. So if you're interested in that, you can definitely go download that and check it out for free. And by the way, links to everything will be in the notes down below this video. All right. So next up, Antoine Bagatini of the add-on Bagapi, which by the way, if you haven't downloaded Bagapi, what are you doing? You need to go download Bagapi. You can get it for free. I'll link to it in the notes down below, but he's rolled out a new add-on as well called Quick Compo. And it's basically a tool that's designed to help you do compositing inside of Blender really quickly. So it's got a bunch of like presets in here for doing different kinds of compositing. So it's got over 30 presets as well as adjustable, um, adjustable settings for your renders as well. So if I jump over into Blender real quick and I'm using the, I think this is the Villagen geometry node setup, but you can see how you can actually use these composite and so you can see how you can use this in order to add different effects using the compositor inside of Blender. And so this has a number of different presets as well as giving you the ability to adjust the individual settings as well. And then you can save them. So you can add things like a glare or anti-aliasing. You can also um, adjust things like the tint or the sac saturation of the images. Um, and you can save those as presets as well. So if you're looking for something to add different effects to your rendered images, this could be a good fit for you. All right, and then finally, this is an add-on I've been meaning to talk about since the Blender Market summer sale and just got around to it. So that's far, how far behind I am. But um, Physical Starlight and Atmosphere is an excellent add-on for creating like procedural backgrounds. Um, so it's basically a volumetric procedural sky, sunlight, and atmosphere simulator. And so instead of bringing an HDRI image in, what Physical Starlight and Atmosphere does is it actually generates um, a procedural sky where you can adjust things like the sun location, um, how high it is, how low it is, other things like that. Notice how when I adjust this, the sunlight is actually adjusting inside of my scene as well. So if I was to rotate it horizontally, notice how the shadows are changing in the scene. So this is a completely procedural sky and atmosphere system. So instead of you having to pick an HDRI and then find something that actually aligns with what you want, this allows you to do it actually live um, just by making adjustments. And it, gi it gives you control over a lot of different things. So for example, and I'll move my sun right here, um, it allows you to do things like if you want like a binary sun or something like that, you can do that. Um, it also gives you control of the atmosphere that's generated in here. So notice how if I bump that up, I get more of a foggy look. Um, but there's a lot of different things you can do with like absorption and different colors and other things like that. Um, the cool thing is it does also come with some different presets. 
um, that allow you to do different things. So like the simple earth preset, if I drop it in here, that's just going to be pretty simple. It's an earth preset, right? But then there's other things that can give you other looks like the Mars preset, for example. If you look at this one, obviously it doesn't fit with the Buildify assets that I'm using, but um, if you look at this, this allows you to kind of like simulate that like Martian sky in your scene. So lots of interesting things you can do with this particular add-on. I mean, notice how this effect is completely like retro or like video game or something. So another cool thing I like about physical starlight and atmosphere is it allows you to use both EV and cycles. Um, and so when you use EV, it's really easy to like place the sun. Um, so you can set it up either way with cycles and EV, but that EV integration is just massive to me because it really does make things really easy to uh, use and to adjust. All right, so leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this week's uh, this week's stuff in the video. If you see anything cool that's going on in Blender, make sure to uh, leave a comment below and let me know. I'm trying to keep up with everything that's going on and uh, it just feels like kind of an uphill battle. So anything you guys see, let me know and I'll try to stay on top of it. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.